Hello, welcome to World History Since 1450. I'm the Canadian history teacher. And we're talking today about a communication revolution, the influence of the printing press. Johann Gutenberg's movable type printing press has had a significant role in transforming the modern world. The printed word launched modern media and modern mass audiences for new information and ideas. The printed revolution expedited movements that have had shaped our modern world, the Renaissance, the Reformation, and the scientific revolution. Even more fundamentally though, the printed word shifted existing authority. Before print, disseminating important information, teaching, learning, building culture was much different. Strategies were required for passing along information orally and remembering it. In both classical and medieval times, much effort was devoted to techniques that enabled people to categorize and recall important information effectively. The philosopher Socrates had misgivings about over-reliance on the written word. He predicted that writing would create forgetfulness in the learner's soul because they will not use their memories, leaving them with, quote unquote, the show of wisdom without the reality. Written text were preserved on scrolls of papyrus or vellum, animal skins. In the monasteries, cathedrals, and universities of the medieval Christian world, these texts were not recorded in the vernacular language, but in the holy language of Latin, narrowing access to the learned. The libraries of monasteries were repositories of rare, unique texts. If a copy needed to be made, this was done in the scriptorium, where a monk would reproduce, as closely as possible, the original text, but inevitably yielding a product with its own differences and errors. Even in this timeless work of copying books by hand, there were transformations. One crucial transformation, largely complete by the start of the Middle Ages, involved the shift from a scroll to a codex, which is the form of our hard copy books today. Pages would no longer be rolled up, but folded or stacked between covers. Book selling became more of a business in the later Middle Ages. Bookshops opened up alongside emerging universities in medieval Europe, and there scribes would produce copies of texts. What was a constant was the laborious process of copying by hand. Gutenberg was probably born in 1394. He came from a notable family in Mainz and learned the trade of goldsmithing, a technical skill which he would later apply to his invention, the printing press. Gutenberg's innovation was in bringing together separate elements into one process. These elements included the printing press itself, individually cast type as opposed to wood blocks, and a hand mold to produce individual type in a method resembling the minting of coins. Finally, he perfected an oil-based ink that would work best with these methods to print on paper or vellum. There had been precursors to these methods, notably in China and Korea, but Gutenberg seems not to have known about these methods. He called his project the work of a books, a deliberately vague phrase to hide his innovation, although he initiated some others into his secret as a way of getting them to invest. One such person was Johann Fust, a prosperous merchant in Mainz who bought into Gutenberg's proposal. Gutenberg's business was immediately attractive to religious authorities. The Catholic Church had been rocked by a schism brought about in 1378 until 1417, when rival popes 
asserted their claims to spiritual authority over Christendom. Even after a council had settled the matter, the unity of Christendom seemed uncertain. What better way to achieve unity of religious practices and belief than issuing a uniform, standard, and approved Bible? Gutenberg's early business focused on printing the Bible, pamphlets that spoke to the great issues of the day, and indulgences or forms sold by the Catholic authorities that released the buyers from their sins. In 1455, just as Gutenberg established some commercial footing with his printing of the Bible, his partner Fust demanded to see returns on his investment and took Gutenberg to court, where Gutenberg lost all of his equipment. Fust took over the business. Gutenberg eventually managed to set up a new print shop. His work included the ambitious encyclopedia, The Catholicon, a book of universal knowledge. Gutenberg died in 1468 in Mainz. He's remembered for the changes that he introduced. Printing revolutionized the speed and range of distribution of text. Earlier, a scribe took several months to produce one text, but a printing press could produce 500 copies in one week. Costs came down with this proliferation so that a printed book probably cost one eighth of its former price. Early text had been the province of religious institutions. Slowly access was democratized. The result, a large reading public, a mass audience for books, newspapers, journals, and pamphlets. The printing press also served to preserve and fix texts. Hand copied text had all been different, even in the work of the most careful scribers, but printed texts were increasingly standardized. Printers promised that their texts were purged of scribal errors, carefully proofread and examined, and thus closer to the originals. There have been some famous mistakes though, such as the printing of a Bible that read, thou shalt commit adultery. To be fair, I've included a more recent example. This is something that is bound to happen from time to time, and when it does, the mistake is mass produced as well. Sweeping social changes were brought about by printing because it created new forms of community around the common reading of printed texts and discussions of new ideas. A new kind of person, the intellectual, no longer necessarily a cleric or religious authority, emerged and communicated with others who had the same shared interests. From its German origins, printing spread at a fantastic rate in Europe and then worldwide. By 1465, German printers introduced printing to Italy and began a great wave of printing of classical authors. Paris had its first printing press in 1470, Krakow in 1474, and Moscow in 1555. The level of production also increased exponentially. It is estimated that by 1500, in all of Europe, some 40,000 individual titles had been published, and there were already some 20 million copies of printed books. The contemporary reactions to printing were mixed. Some called it a divine art because it promised to spread religious doctrine more consistently, uniformly, and authentically. However, others, probably including many scribes, saw it as something from the devil. In at least one legend, Gutenberg's partner, Fust, seems to have been confused with Faust, a legendary scholar who sold his soul to the devil to win total knowledge. 
Among the biggest outcomes of this turning point were the later Renaissance, the Reformation, the Scientific Revolution, and the growth of national communities. The Renaissance and the intellectual movement of humanism predated the printing press, but were supercharged by its potential. The humanist concern with regaining and reviving the classical knowledge and wisdoms was assisted by the new availability of classical texts. A half century after its invention, printing also supercharged the Protestant Reformation. In 1517, the Catholic priest, Martin Luther, announced his famed 95 Theses, calling for changes in the church. What made this call different than earlier ones was that Luther's writings were disseminated with great speed, thanks to the printing press. In a sense, the fit between medium and message here is perfect. Luther's message of sola scriptura, scripture alone, was the true source of legitimate authority, and it worked well with the new power to print scripture. The spiritual significance of print was deep for the Protestants, who stressed how vitally important it was for all believers to read the Bible themselves as God's word. The scientific revolution, which introduced new knowledge about the observed world, was also sped along by print. One of the launching texts of this movement was a work published by Nicholas Copernicus in 1543, in which he argued that the earth revolved around the sun, not the other way around. Printing also shaped the linguistic communities that we know and belong to today. To cater to mass popular audiences, printers moved beyond the Latin of learned texts to print in vernacular languages, the everyday speech of the people. In the process, they standardized these languages, giving them a form and fixity that they had not possessed earlier. Historians also argue that the medium of print created a new sense of national community. Reading together, whether newspapers or novels, gave people a sense of belonging to what the historian Benedict Anderson has called an imagined community of the nation, united li linguistically by print. Of all the changes this turning point unleashed, let's conclude by underlining the rich paradox at the heart of early printing. Printers announced that they offered ancient authoritative texts, accurately transmitted, cleansed of scribal errors, both old and new and improved at the same time. Paradoxically, in the pursuit of ancient wisdom, newness could be desirable, and it might, in the process, unexpectedly open up new worlds.